Good afternoon. How are you? Well, you know, it's getting late in the day. Sun's going down. Goes down sooner every day. Walk, working its way toward the shortest day of the year, but we're not there yet. We still have sunshine. 59 degrees and uh, it's kind of windy, although you're able to hear me right now, which is really positive. Uh, it's hard to say what the key issues are um, in the sense of news of the world, but the ones we focused on, I think, remain in the top at parade. First of all, in the Middle East, are we ahead on points or, or have we found ourselves in more difficulty? I think that whenever you have hotheads on the several different sides, each convinced not only are they right, but that they could win in a physical combat situation, use power that way and forget the negotiating table, then you have this kind of craziness going on. So we still have uh, Netanyahu standing outside Gaza saying the next step is invasion and the eradication of uh, Hamas. Meanwhile, the Hezbollah, which is a uh, Shiite Muslim party in Lebanon, has been uh, exchanging fire and warnings with Israel. And Hezbollah is saying, Look, Israel, if you go in and you attack uh, Hamas in Gaza, then we'll be in the fight as well. And they hearken back to 2006 when it was kind of, they were kind of fought to a draw. That is, the Hezbollah and uh, the Israelis. So there's that. Also, they have an, an enormous storehouse of missiles. They have something like 150,000 missiles, which is nothing to joke about. So, as long as Netanyahu doesn't go in to eradicate Hamas and Gaza, then perhaps Hezbollah will stay at its distance. But I don't think it's going to take much for these people to act out. So there is that problem. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, I think they would just as soon take their chances and attack each other and blow each other up and uh, we'll see how that works out. The uh, As I'm walking along here, it looks like there was an accident. You're okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're good, thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm not a policeman, I'm just asking you. <laughs> Anybody hurt? No. <laughs> good to see you. So, on our sleepy dirt road, somehow, somebody drove into a wooden fence and the sheriff's on the way to clear it up. This from your roving reporter in Loudoun County, John Flannery, with breaking news <laughs> of a certain sort, breaking cars. So, that aside, bigger wars to be fought in the Middle East. And in the Middle East, we have this uncertainty, and Netanyahu may be paused by the fact that the money from our Congress is stuck because the Republicans are in chaos and disorganized. And so maybe he's, he's holding back for that reason. Also, he's getting that advice. That is to, well, hang loose. <laughs> Don't invade. And uh, we can't be sure because no one's saying that's what's going on. But that sure looks like what's going on. So... Uh, let's turn to the Hill, those people that may or may not fork over the money that's necessary. And what we have there is quite an interesting situation <laughs> because we don't have a speaker. And so far, and I think rightly, none of the makeshift substitutes for the speaker have been supported in the Republican caucus or conference in the House. So... They're going to have to try to get somebody to come in and be the speaker, a person whom they can all agree is going to be everything to all parties. I don't know how that's possible, but the uh, McCarthy was on the talking heads today, and basically he said, it's the Democrats' fault, because <laughs> the Democrats didn't vote for him. What planet is he on? He has sufficient well, I should say his caucus has sufficient votes to
to carry anything by a few votes. But he can't afford to lose more than four votes. Nobody can, not just uh, McCarthy, uh, no Jack and Jordan, and anybody else who wants to run. So that puts us in the situation where <laughs> McCarthy goes on and says, it's the Democrats. They don't want to work on these issues and solve them. And then he casts the issues in a very conservative Republican way and wonders aloud if <laughs> uh, the Democrats wouldn't want to come along. I, I don't know. These people are on a different planet. When I was a kid, the, the few Irish people that I knew, I, I was concerned that uh, the, the dilemma for a young Bronx Irish kid was uh, <laughs> finding an intelligent one. And uh, that was unfair and wrong, particularly as I got even just a little older and got to know Moynihan and, uh, you know, the variety of people who were both Republican and Democrat and in the arts and everything else. But as a kid in my neighborhood, there wasn't a lot of evidence. <laughs> so it seems to me that uh, these people in Congress are just terrified so much so that they can't think independently or can't think at all. I don't know. But the, that circus will continue. Uh, the uh, one person that McCarthy said he would push for, and keep in mind that there are presently nine candidates in the Republican caucus, each of whom thinks they should be the Speaker of the House. And as uh, McCarthy said, and, you know, he can't do anything in a gracious way. He basically knocks all the people who are running except one and said he's the only one worth having. And that's Tom Epper. And Tom Epper is, uh, if I'm right, a Republican from Minnesota. I know he's right about the Republican. And uh, he's been their whip. Uh, they're a the majority leader. So he's in a position to command respect within the, the conference and you might ask, why not him sooner? And it's because there were larger, larger ambitions ahead of him online. Finally, um, moving on to our other subject, Trump. We haven't heard from Trump. What a sad, sad thing, huh? Has he finally been muffled? He's, he's tied up in the case that's going to take apart his phony organization and render it useless and worthless right now there's obviously funds tied up in it in some way or other so that's about what I got um, I do want to say that it's like overnight the trees are changing the winds are dropping the leaves on the ground it's that time of year when we pass we, we can feel and see and uh, exist in the passage from warmer times and kind of a settled beauty to a time of transformation in which things go into hibernation. Days get shorter before they get longer. Uh, and I thought, and I've been asked about this, you know, I take pictures as I go along, and uh, the uh, pictures I take, I'm every day taking pictures in uh, an area that I've walked ever since the beginning of the uh, pandemic. I mean, I don't remember exactly why, but the first day I did a walk and talk, I was thinking about something, and I, something was in the news, and I thought, well, you know, I'll talk about it. I'll remind myself later. And then I thought, well, I'll share it. And as I, I, I sort of, I did enjoy it, and so I started doing it every day. And so I've done it, uh, if not every day, pretty close. Uh, and the only time I don't do it is when uh, geography, uh, obstacles, illness, whatever gets in the way. The, uh, and I, Holly and I well appreciated the fact that we got, uh, when she went in the hospital, we mentioned it. And my Irish, I asked her, did she want others to know about it? Because my Irish, you might not know about it. I just wonder where I was. And... And she was right. I'm glad we did what we did because we had immediately two million mentions on uh, Twitter 
and uh, lots of people said kind things. And what, what you, you learn in life is that the things that make the big difference that are the salve for the pain that you can go from one to another is a kind word from somebody. It doesn't have to be anything. My friends, when they say they don't know what to say at a wake or something, uh, I say, it's just very easy. You just go over and tell them, I'm sorry. How are you doing? What can I do for you? That's it. And the, the, there is no good answer to that for the person grieving. But they feel, nevertheless, better for the fact that you cared to ask. So that's it. It doesn't, it's not a performance. It is a, a human act that we have and the Republicans lost. So here we are at the, this uh, stage of uh, <laughs> elections and public life and so forth. And we get a chance to go outside, and particularly those of you who ha don't have to limit themselves to 30 minutes walking, uh, go outside and enjoy the brisk air and experience one of the most valuable things that we have to offer. So uh, that's it for now. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.